This is a good one for you today. This is the story of a man who found five gold coins using a Polaroid camera as a metal detector. I found a, a, a number of uh, Iron Age gold coins which produced auras um, uh -huh. with a Polaroid camera. Does science back this up? By now, you've heard of the San Jose, the shipwreck off of the coast of Colombia that is potentially worth $18 billion. $18 billion, much of it in gold. Keep that in your head. So here's an odd one. All the gold we've ever dug up from the earth would fit in just three and a half Olympic-sized swimming pools. <coughs> Bullsh**. That's really not a lot of gold. Yet it's, well, everywhere. Maybe I watched the wrong cartoons growing up, but that figure seems a little bit off. $18 billion, th that's such an earthly figure. You might have heard of the exposed planet core that was found out in space. It's called 16 Psyche. And if you don't account for the depreciation that would happen when the market is flooded with supply, it's worth 10,000 quadrillion dollars. Yeah, remember the three Olympic-sized swimming pools, all the gold mined in the history of the Earth? There's so much more in the core and in the mantle of the Earth. All the rocky planets that we know of all have got a metal core in their center. And especially for the Earth, it's the source of our magnetic field. But we don't know a lot about our core. What we've learned about it, we learn indirectly because we can't go there. It's too hot, the pressure's too high. Our instruments would melt can't drill a hole that deep in the Earth or other planets. It turns out we can study a planetary core out in space because there's this one object, this one object called Psyche. How do they know it's metal? 16 Psyche is an asteroid that orbits the Sun out between Mars and Jupiter. It is the only asteroid that we're aware of that is 95% metal or more. What did they do? How did they know that it's metal? and is really huge. It's about 200 kilometers across in one axis. So it's about the size of Massachusetts. It's believed that it may be a remnant core of an early planetesimal that was formed in the very, very earliest parts of the formation of the solar system. And after this planet started forming and this metal core formed inside of that, it collided with other bodies that then stripped off the rocky mantle, leaving this core in place. Now, it's safe to say that our eyes do not see everything. This is visible light. Tools like the James Webb Telescope helps us see beyond the visible spectrum. Now, wait a second. We're, we're, I'm not Mr. Wizard, okay? And we're, we're treasure hunters here. There's a method called spectroscopy that essentially allows scientists to look out into the distance and see the composition of objects that are far, far away. Like, what are they made of? It's kind of like what our metal detectors do. Here, li li listen to the smart girl. Here is argon. If we turn it on here, it glows this really pretty purple. And then if we look at it with a spectroscope, it shows us a very specific fingerprint to argon. These are called spectral tubes. My bounty of tubes. They contain the gas of one element, and the box runs a voltage through the tube. When I turn on the switch, hey. the charged gas turns to plasma and emits a color that is unique to that one element. It also makes unique lines when you look through the spectroscope. And this one is helium. This same process happens in a star or a hot region of gas. So we use tubes like this to verify what we see in space. No, you're not gonna be able to dig that up, but maybe there's some applications that we could apply to help our treasure hunting on Earth. Now, good for you if you didn't tick tock away. We're getting to the good part, and every word that I have said to this point is a setup to get us right here. And now we're gonna compare the James Webb Telescope with the Polaroid camera. And we are going to try very hard to connect this with science. A gentleman named Louis Matassia wrote a very controversial book in the late 90s. Matassia believed in the concept of treasure auras. 
and he suggested that a Polaroid SX-70 camera can help you see treasure auras, such as gold. I wholeheartedly agree that that sounds pretty loony. But the thing is, there is a whole community that is dedicated to this on the internet. But wait a second, isn't this an aura, in a way? And this is science. But wait a second, we've established that there's more to visual light than what we can see. Maybe there's a alternate use for a Polaroid camera. I mean, Viagra was originally used to treat high blood pressure. And the person who took Louis Matassia's theories to the next level and applied it to digital photography is named David Villanueva. Now, in the video description and the pinned comment, I'm going to put links to uh, David Villanueva's books, as well as an interview that he did on Treasure Hunter Radio. When I first started metal detecting in 2012, this was all over the internet. People are always looking for an edge. You might have heard of these XRF X-ray analyzer guns that tell you what type of metal an object has. Yeah, this isn't one of them, but imagine the problem here. You hold it to the dirt or it's the end of your metal detector and it's next to the dirt after you uh, beep on a target, identify a target. Guess what? It's going to get the dirt. It's going to get rocks. It's going to throw everything off. Believe me, I've looked into this. It needs an isolated sample. Even the James Webb telescope is limited to the composition of the surface. Villanueva believes that auras can be identified under the surface and they get stronger the longer that the object that's creating the aura stays under the surface. And there you can see a typical gold aura. It's actually got bigger in size since the target was buried two years ago. The target will be under the center of the aura where it is a little stronger and brighter. If you look back on my videos, I clearly love beach metal detecting. Imagine setting up a camera, taking a picture, and you see all of these auras popping up. My question is, is there a different aura for gold than there is for a Corona bottle cap? Let's look into that and listen to Villanueva's own words. And remember, all everything that I cite here is linked to in the video description and the pinned comment. The first thing that I'm going to cite is David Villanueva's own video on his process. We're taking segments here. You should definitely check out the entire thing. In a minute, I'm gonna show you how to use a digital camera to find better trigger. The one drawback of using a digital camera in this way is that you need to have a fairly dark filter in front of the lens and then you can't see the image on the back screen. For the purpose of this demonstration I'm using StepCam which provides a stable platform for both the camera and the laptop computer. With this arrangement I can process the images in real time. We're just having a look at the view in front of the camera. As you can see there is nothing on the surface to indicate anything is buried below. Here I'm firing the camera direct from the computer. The image is downloaded direct onto the computer. As you will see, the image is very dark, but you should be able to see a lighter area, bottom centre. Enhancing makes the image much clearer. And there you can see a typical gold aura. It's actually got bigger in size since the target was buried two years ago. Here I'm running a line out from the camera to locate the target. And all I have to do is follow the line with the metal detector until I get a positive signal. And his book actually talks on beach auras. It wouldn't be fair of me to give away all of the secrets in his books and of his process. Again, I'm linking to uh, his pages and such. Um, but he did do an interview on Treasure Hunter Radio. Now today, I am pleased to have on the show Treasure Hunter and author of the ebook. The successful treasure hunter's secret manual, David Villanueva. So here's 
some of the more interesting questions that were asked and their answers. I, and this is the biggest question. When I mentioned that it, there was such a controversy around the, the, the theory, I mean, do we have any scientific, you know, documentation that, yes, this is actually a, I mean, do we have photos from space or I mean, <laughs> something that can, I, you know, identify or do miners use a technique to where they know they're going to, you know, locate or focus on a certain area? I mean, do they, you know where I'm getting at here? I, I, I know what you're getting at, yes. There isn't, I, I don't know of any um, treaties um, um, on it. When I hear that no science can be connected to it, that's usually where I leave. But the thing is, if you look across the internet, there have been people that can replicate David Villanueva's process. And we might have found a plausible explanation. I, I wasn't the um, the one that, that discovered you could use a camera for for photographic auras. Um, right. It, it basically came from a guy called Louis J. Matasia, who you may have heard of, and he he, well, he wrote a couple of books um, explaining how to use the Polaroid SX70 um, camera for photographing treasure auras. My, my experience is that I picked up Louis J. Matasia's book. I've, Particularly went after it, um, having heard about about it on the uh, on the internet, mm-hmm. um, and I got myself uh, an SX70 camera, and sure enough, I followed Louis Bettesier's um, method, uh, and I found a, a number of uh, Iron Age gold coins which produced auras um, mm-hmm. with a Polaroid camera. So. I was convinced it, it then worked. It, it then worked. What then happened was was with the great um, take off of digital cameras, is the Polaroid, the Polaroid company ran into trouble and stopped producing the SX70 film, the Time Zero film that the camera used. So I, I didn't want to give up the tool, so I started investigating other means of doing it, and that was with all the pol- Polaroid films and with digital cameras. And I actually found that the, the, the digital ca- the camera actually worked <laughs> much better than the Polaroid did. My initial response was, this is a cash grab. Um, Polaroid and uh, regular film was on the way out. Digital cameras at the time of his writing were just coming into vogue. Now we have them on our phones. The next section probably won't help tie this into science. Well, I would think because the just by the nature of um, you know being able to pick up uh, things that aren't necessarily visible through the naked eye, it would be a little more clearer. You're saying that it was not visible to the naked eye. I am actually um, now having photographs sent in, which have been taken with ordinary cameras that are actually showing auras, but people didn't know they were showing auras. They thought there was something wrong with the camera. Or so on. So, so these auras are visible anyway. Right. Um, they're just enhancing them with um, the Makes it camera, easier. The digital camera. Now, for my initial question, how can you tell what metal is in the ground? Um, New York City, where I'm from, yeah, it, it's the land of bottle caps. How can you tell? I mean, if all buried metals and only metals give off this kind of aura or electromagnetic infrared field or what have you, how can you tell which metals are which? Um, There's the, the, the two, two ways. Uh, I mean, it, nothing is precise. Um, but w- one way is, is that uh, precious metals, gold and silver, give off much greater auras than the, 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 the worst case is steel. Um, that, that, that I've seen so far with, with uh, copper and aluminum in between. So you have a, a, a discrimination by size of aura, but also there is a colour discrimination as well. Um, gold tends to be deep red, um, silver, orange, and uh, others, and to go into sort of yellows um, so, so within that there, there is um, um, you know uh, these, these two discriminatory um, elements 
so that'll narrow it down if you take a picture and you see a, an area that appears to be deep red that you might be looking at a at a goal location if your mind is yelling bullshit right now um you wouldn't be alone i was thinking the same thing at this point how long were those coins that you had buried there for the test how long were they were they there how long did you have them buried there at the time i took the video they had been there around 18 months but i did actually get the aura after a couple of days but it gets okay. stronger with with time i would think because of the the way it would ionize or whatever the feed, whatever the, the proper term is the soil around it that's how it would make it yes yeah, yeah yeah yes ionized precious metals don't corrode we know that when we pull silver when we pull gold from the ground sure the patina will change a little bit but uh, they are not as affected as say copper iron i should have said iron right there there i just said it what what do you need i guess are, are these are these uh, items that are easily accessible? You don't need to have this tremendous, you know, amount of digital camera property, I'm assuming. No, um, obviously some cameras are better than others and some probably won't work at all. I find that people come back to me with a few questions about using their camera. But my favorite is um, is a Canon DS DSLR of a few years ago. Um, that's a, a, a digital single lens reflex. It, it views through the lens. I mean, it's uh -huh. one of the more more expensive of the, of the digital cameras, but they're not uh, outrageously expensive. I also had a, a very cheap camera that uh, that worked as well. So um, a, 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 a Olympus cameras seem to be quite good at uh, this. But if you if you want to, I mean, you can quite easily test your own camera. Um, you know, you'll need a sample of, you know, a couple of ounces of silver, right? Uh, for, 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 the, for the example. But the um, going back to the the old film days, um, the, the the leader from the from the color film that was um, exposed to light and then developed um, has infrared filter properties, so you can. You can put just get cut some of this up and put it in front of your lens, um, and, and find out for yourself whether your camera will work without you know spending um, too much money on cameras. Infrared filter that's important, and if 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 there is science in this, this next part is extremely important. Is there a particular time frame that you can you do if you're doing this kind of search? Can you can you do this technique? all day at night i mean can you is this something that only can be done at a certain time of day or night um it, it's it seems to work best in the middle of the day uh, and, and it, it is temperature dis, di, 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 dependent um i mean as long, long as it's, it's re recommended ab ab above about 50 degrees fahrenheit but um, you can go down to freezing as long as you haven't got ice crystals around because around, the ice crystals reflect the light and it just right. causes absolute confusion. But uh, um, the, the, the hottest part of the day um, seems to be, you know, a couple of hours either side, side of noon seems to be um, the, the best time. But Now that statement might actually make it plausible with science. Warmest part of the day infrared filter what does an infrared camera see it sees heat radiating from something now picture this it is the hottest day of the year and sunlight is absolutely scorching the earth and it's actually uh, starting to radiate down into the ground and it starts to change the temperature of an object that is under the soil you know we see gold coin spills all the time and the heat is held in those coins better than in the soil around it. Oh, great. We got a solution. Pat yourself on the back, Merrill. Or do we? I don't claim to be an expert on thermal dynamics or whatever it's called. Thermal inertia. There we go. Stainless steel demonstrated the most thermal inertia. Resistance to temperature change and aluminum the lowest. That actually makes a lot of sense. Whenever you use a toaster oven, you put a piece of aluminum here and it's over a piece of uh, stainless 
And I always burn myself on this, but the aluminum, you could actually touch almost right away. So if it's heat that's actually giving off these auras, shouldn't stainless steel have the greatest heat signature? But one way is that uh, precious metals, gold and silver, give off much brighter auras than the, the, the worst case is steel um, that I've seen so far. Well, there goes that one. Again, I'm going to link to everything that I cited in this video, and I hope that you check it out on your own. I only showed you small excerpts of the video from Treasure Hunter Radio. I also didn't show you David's complete video or uh, his books. I'll link to those also. Uh, he deserves a chance to explain himself uh, in that realm. This conversation reminds me of dowsing a little bit, but perhaps to a little bit lesser of an extent. There are tons of people out there that believe that, despite science cannot prove it, that dowsing is a legitimate tool to, one, find water, two, find treasure. But I can't wait to see what you write in the comments. This should be an interesting discussion. I look forward to it. Thank you for watching.